The Kia Sorento name has had a long history for Kia and consistently been one of the company's top sellers. Back in 2021, we saw an all new fourth generation model. So for 2025, Kia is giving the Sorento a pretty significant refresh. I'm here on the show floor of the 2023 LA Auto Show. And this right here is the 2025 Sorento Hybrid. Let's take a first look. Now, before we start talking about all the exterior styling changes for the 2025 Sorento, let me go ahead and remind you guys what's underneath the hood. Now, just like in the pre-refresh model, Kia will offer a choice of four different powertrains on the Sorento for 2024 and 2025. This model here that I'm showing you is probably the sweet spot. It's the Sorento Hybrid, which means you have a 1.6 liter turbocharged gasoline direct injection four cylinder paired up with an electric motor with available all wheel drive to deliver 227 horsepower, 258 pound feet of torque. Those figures are from a 2023 model. Kia wasn't ready to share what the powertrain specs will be on the 2025 hybrid or plug-in hybrid. They did say that the 2024 version, which will also get the refresh, will come also with a 2.5 gas engine, naturally aspirated, delivering 191 horsepower, or a turbocharged version of that 2.5 liter, delivering 281 horsepower, 311 pound-feet of torque. You can take your pick between either front or all-wheel drive. There's a new X-Pro model that's going to give you a little bit better towing capacity, up to 4,000 pounds. But overall, this hybrid version will be delayed by about a year compared to the gas-only model. And I suspect it should continue to be uh, one of the top selling powertrain choices for the Sorento. But let's go ahead and close up the hood. And I wanted to talk about the exterior styling. First of all, this color is a new color called Midnight Lake Blue. It certainly uh, looks really good on the lines of the new Sorento. And if you guys have seen some of the newer Kia products like the EV9, of course, the refresh Telluride, you can kind of see that Kia has significantly changed the front end. It basically has almost like an EV9 meets Telluride kind of grafted onto the front fascia. You have the new Kia logo here, an updated version of their tiger nose grill. And then you can see it's got these amber illuminated daytime running lights where it has the same kind of style as the EV9, where it has this light signature that goes horizontal and then it goes vertical down the four individual LED reflectors or projector housings. You can see down here, there are some functional openings. It looks like no fog lights on this model. I think the pre-refresh model actually had fog lights. You can see you have this kind of uh, silver painted front uh, skid plate looking like material that's on the front fascia of the vehicle. Uh, and you can also see there's a front camera. Overall, the styling of this car certainly looks interesting. I actually think I might prefer the pre-refresh model versus this new face. Maybe I just need to get used to it. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think of the new front fascia of this Kia Sorento. Now around the side profile, you can see this is Kia's midsize SUV that is available with three rows. The Telluride is technically their full size to midsize SUV, but it still has the same length because this is just a refresh at 189 inches overall and a wheelbase that's just shy of 111 inches long. So comparison to the Telluride, this vehicle is about seven inches shorter overall, which gives it a more just right proportion, although it's not quite as big and spacious on the inside as the Telluride. Now looking at the wheels, you can see all the wheels have been revised. Uh, these are the wheels that you get on the hybrid. They're a 19 inch wheel with kind of a two-tone machine and black inner spoke with a directional look to it. It's riding on a 235 by 55 R19 uh, all season tire. Uh, over there you can actually see is the X-Pro model. The X-Pro has basically the same off-road upgrades that you see on the Telluride where it has a 17 inch black wheel with a kind of all-terrain looking tire. Kia didn't mention if that model here has more ground clearance, but it certainly gives it a more rugged look compared to this hybrid version that I'm standing right by. Now, as you can see as well, uh, this model here has some bright accents. There's some silver accents here along the side skirt, along the window trim, along the roof rails of the roof of the vehicle, along with the panoramic uh, sunroof. Uh, the rest of the proportions here, you can see pretty much looks the same. Remember, this is just a heavy refresh. And then coming to the rear, the taillights are practically identical to the 2023 model, but as you can see, it has a new light signature. Kia says that it kind of resembles the Telluride a little bit more. Uh, it definitely has a more masculine, a little bit more bo boxy look to the pre-refresh model. You can see the spoiler appears to be a little bit larger. Kia does offer their version of a digital camera rear view mirror, which is nice. There is some badging here, the updated Kia logo badge, of course, the Sorento badge, and then H HEV, which stands for hybrid. If you see PHEV, that stands for plug-in hybrid. Down here, you can see no visible exhaust tips. That's okay. There's some nice sanctuary parking centers and some more of that silver, silver trim. Now, opening up the cargo area, the release for it is actually down there. You can see because this vehicle does have a third row and it's a little bit small, when the third row is up, you can see the space is pretty tight. You only have around 12.6 cubic feet of total storage space. There is a little bit of underfloor storage where you can see there's the jack. So there is a spare tire in this vehicle. If you want to fold down the seats, Kia makes it pretty simple. 
You just kind of pull that strap. That expands the cargo to just under 40 cubic feet. And then if you fold down the second row, Kia says you get a maximum of just over 75 cubic feet, which is good, but just know that the Telluride obviously is gonna give you uh, a little bit more space than this. So the exterior of the new Sorento got some pretty big changes, but what about the interior? You can see this particular one that I'm showing you has a really interesting color combination with that midnight lake blue on the outside and this interior, which that door actually sounds really, really solid. The uh, interior is called dust blue. And you can see this is a pretty high trim of the hybrid. It has some diamond quilted uh, leather. These seats are also heated and ventilated. They offer a 12-way power adjustment on the driver's side, along with an eight-way power on the passenger side. So a lot of great luxury touches. And then you can see with the rest of the interior, it gets the latest version, of course, of Kia's newest design language. You have a completely curved display here where most of the trims are gonna come standard with this uh, dual display layout, where you have a 12.3-inch digital display here and then a 12.3 inch center display unfortunately i don't have the key fob for the vehicle so i can't actually turn it on and show you guys the look but i love how it has kind of like a single curved display uh, which is great in terms of the door panel materials you can see soft touch injection molded plastic there's some silver painted plastic trim more of that blue and contrasting leather here on the door panel the window controls they're one touch for all four they feel pretty high quality i have two person memory seating i have this really big door handle here along with some interesting uh, triangle patterns in the actual door panels and a padded center console area. The steering wheel looks pretty much the same as the preview fresh model. This was kind of an opportunity for Kia to change the way the steering wheel looks. It does offer uh, a manual tilt and telescoping adjustment, which is great. Uh, the big story, of course, besides this looking a little bit different, is the software, which I wish I could show you the software, but this has a new version of Kia's uh, connected navigation software system where it now finally has finally, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, along with over-the-air updates. Kia and Hyundai have been really resistant to adding wireless CarPlay and over-the-air updates, especially on their bigger screens, but it's great to see it kind of showing up on a lot of these newer products. They really needed it. Uh, the rest of the dash, you can see, have like has like a soft-touch injection wool material with this faux stitching. It all looks very cohesive. It's nicely designed. I like how the air vents kind of flow into the center vents over here, and then you have that touch panel here where it changes from audio controls to climate controls based on a button you can press over here in the center console area you can see uh, you have some pretty good storage you have two USB-C charging ports a wireless phone charging pad your heated and cooled seats which I'm, I appreciate how Kia is doing an actual button over here and then you have a drive mode selector or you have a transmission selector that's this kind of rotary dial along with your drive mode selector here along with some cup holders and some piano black plastic over here in the center console uh, you can see it offers a pretty good amount of storage which is good for hiding some items and it also has a padded lid uh, these seats they're all they've always been comfortable and supportive for me I love the fact that the diamond quilted leather is now in this kind of dust blue which looks great uh, for or with the color combination as well the glove compartment you can see is a bin style it's stamped and it's lined with felt so uh, overall uh, even though this isn't the biggest suv kia makes you can see it offers a lot of nice touches above me there there's a pig panoramic glass roof which goes all the way into the second row uh with speaking of which let's go ahead and hop back there so i can show you guys what the space uh, is like back here but uh, in terms of the second row space you can see this model here has captain's chairs the captain's chairs definitely uh, make this thing a little bit more upscale and you can see I'll move the seat back it slides forward and back. This does limit the seating capacity to six. Uh, you can also get it with a bench seat. The seat itself has the ability to kind of recline, which is nice. You have these little fold out armrests here, which is good. Uh, and then in terms of the legroom space, Kia says there's around uh, 41 inches of legroom in the second row. I suspect that's with the seat all the way back. Obviously you can kind of slide it forward and back if you'd like. There is a flat floor over here. You have rear seat air vents. You have a power outlet, of course, along with a 12 volt. There are some manual retractable shades. Materials back here are also nice. You have heated seats back here. Here, but no cool seats that's something you can get in the telluride but again you kind of have to save some of those features uh, for their more expensive vehicle but let's go ahead and hop into the third row which the third row is kind of accessed by pushing this little button over here and you can see this is with the seat folded down i'll go ahead and i'll put this seat back up um, but overall let me see here get back here and show you guys the space thank you rob Let's see here i'll move this seat back kia says there's around 29 inches of legroom back here now this is not all the way back, so what I'll do here is I'll show you guys what this is like. This is a lot easier when I was younger. What this looks like when the seat's all the way back. So that's what it's all the way back. For somebody my height, whew, at five foot seven, this actually isn't too bad. You can see my knees, the floor's kind of high, so my knees are kind of up there, um, but it's not slammed into the back of this, which is surprising. Headroom space, you can see I still have a little bit of headroom, although if I start to lean back, my hair is touching the roof. Uh, in terms of features, there are two USB-C charging ports, which is nice. A little bit of storage, it's all pretty much hard touch plastic. Obviously the vehicle is not wide enough to carry three across back here. 
Um, but overall, uh, if you need to actually carry kids to average size adults on shorter trips, you can certainly do it here in the Sorrento in the third row. Now, before we wrap up this video, I thought I'd show you quickly what the plug-in hybrid model looks like. You can see it looks practically identical to the hybrid that we showed you. It does have a slightly different look to the wheel, uh, but other than that, the rest of the profile pretty much looks the same. But there is one difference, of course, over here uh, on the rear fender you'll find the charge port door. Now, I don't have the actual specs of the 2025 version. The old model would do around 32 miles of electric only range. You can see there is the J1772 plug. Uh, Kia wasn't ready to talk about what the range or battery capacity is going to change to for this 2025 model, but I suspect it'll either stay the same or the company could improve it. It could use a little bit more range and a little bit more electric only power. Now, if you guys are looking to get your hands on the revised 2025 Sorento, uh, you're gonna have to wait until the early part of next year. Kia wasn't ready to talk about pricing just yet, but they did say if you want to get a hold of the plug-in hybrid and the hybrid, you're going to have to wait a little bit longer further versus the gas only. The gas only will launch first as a 2024, while the hybrid and plug-in hybrid will come as a 2025 toward the middle toward end part of 2024. And if you guys are going to speculate pricing, or at least if I'm going to speculate pricing, the current model, the 2023 starts at around $30,000, goes up to around $40,000 for gas. The plug-in hybrid can get to around $52,000 fully loaded. So I suspect it's going to be obviously more expensive, but with the Sorento uh, moving further up market and the Telluride further moving further up market, these SUVs have just become a little bit nicer for those of you who are looking for a just right family SUV. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2025 Sorento. For Redline Reviews here at the 2023 Los Angeles Auto Show, I'm Sofian Bay.